Yeah, what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Capone, you know what I'm saying? One half of that dynamic duo, Capone and Oriega. And right now, tuned in to Mikey T, the movie star, you know what I'm saying? Take me into how things picked back up for CNN once you got home from jail. Yeah, you know, like, it was like, while I was in jail, I was seeing no removing, I'm seeing things. But the crazy shit was, on my wall in my cell, I had a picture of two cars, uh, a Montero Mitsubishi and a Lexus SC, excuse me, 400, right? I said, these are the two cars I want, right? So when it was time for me to come home, jokingly, I said, Joe, they said, yo, what you need to come home? I said, 10,000 cash, three cases of champagne, a pound of weed, and a mink, and all this shit, and a Lexus SC400, or 430, or whatever it was, and they got all the shit. <laughs> no, we said, yo, you got all the shit. We coming to get you. We got the red Lexus waiting for you when you get off the bus. I, I, the mink, the money, the fucking weed, all this is documented on MTV though, it's on, a, it's on their Capone's Home documentary that, that they had. And you seen uh, Steph Level on the bus, you know, and it was crazy, but all that shit was real. They made all that come true. That's when I came home and I said, damn, I wanted the red Lex, but then I seen Nori, he got the GS Lex, and you know, he living here, I'm like, damn, maybe I was thinking small. It was like, bro, you thinking way small. Fuck that Lexus, let's go to the deal in the mall, all types, of, I'm like, holy shit. That's when I realized that CNN is not Capone and Noriega anymore. It's Capone and Noriega. It's now CNN. You know how you made it when your name get abbreviated. That's how you know you made it, when your shit get abbreviated. So we went from Capone and Noriega to trying to make our name known to everybody calling us CNN. So at that, that point, it was like the magazines. I came home to like seven magazine covers and 13 magazine spreads and Clothes, bidding war for me, all types of shit. That's when I said, oh, this life is different. Yeah. So Capone, at this point, did you find it hard to change your lifestyle? Did you find it hard to change your lyrics? Because you may not have had some of the same experiences Nori was having. Yeah, nah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I didn't change my lyrics because- No, you didn't. You were still rapping about selling yeah. crap, being- Yeah, I was still doing the same, I, I was still like, not doing the same shit. But that time they took away from me, I didn't want to spend just being a celebrity. I liked being in the hood. I like going to the hood. So that that's why I rapped what I rap because it's like I was really living it. Because if I'm talking to you right now, not you, but I'm in the hood and I'm on a bench and I'm talking to you and the police blitz, they're going to take me down too. You feel what I'm saying? Even though I ain't selling no crack, I got a hip record out. I'm not selling no crack, I ain't doing nothing. But I'm guilty by association. So damn right, I got a right, I got a right to rap that shit because I'm living it with you. You know what I'm saying? I just don't got fucking crack on me. But if you need $50 and you say, Paul, give me $50, I don't know what you're going to do with that $50. But if you go buy a crack and turn it to $100, shit, I'll just help you make $100. Not knowingly, but now you go to fucking fast for that shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, Exactly. You got to watch what you're doing now because everything is a exactly. conspiracy. Everybody's a kingpin and everybody is. A nigga asked me for $100. I, I got to give it to him in tokens or some shit. Like, you, got, right. you don't know what the fuck going on. You cash app your homie $300. The next thing you know, you're in a federal indictment. You're in a federal like, indictment. You know what I'm saying? So you, 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 you cash app me. Nah, nigga. <laughs> like, fuck that. You know what so, I'm saying? Uh, Motherfuckers take it like you, you foul. No, I'm playing safe. It's nothing safe no more. It's nothing safe. So can you tell me about creating the second CNN album after getting out of jail? How, how soon did the reunion come about? Oh, uh, shit. When I, th that was the plan. Like, when I came home, it was going to be the reunion. And uh, we got right to work. We got right to work. We got right to work after Tommy Boy dissolved penalty. Because we started, excuse me, we started at uh, penalty. But then Tom Silverman just waits up one day. It's like, I'm going to shut penalty down. Fuck him. Fuck Neil Levine. He even fired, uh, uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's his partner's name at the time? Uh, 
I, I'm gonna get back to him, but he even fired him, Adam, I think, I forgot his name, I'm, I'm gonna get it. But he was just cold, he was just cold, you know what I'm saying, Tom Silverman was cold. And he fired, they, he's right hand man, Neil Levine. And we told him that we want a certain artist to, to come with us and these things of that nature. And he said, okay, then when we got there, he reneged on his word. He reneged on his word to everything he said with us. Only thing he did do was give us a boatload of fucking money. But that was just to shut us up. They shut us up temporarily, but when we find out the fuck shit that was going on, it was like, all right, you know? I'm not saying that he jerked us or anything, because he didn't jerk us. I don't want nobody to get that. He just It just didn't work the way we were supposed to work it. The shit that he sold us into working, because we didn't have to sign the Tommy Boy. He was dissolving um, penalty. He was asking us to sign with him. Because it would make the transition easy. But we could have said no. We could have easily said no, fuck you, or give us this. And we played the game. Like, fuck it. Long as you bring these people with you, with us, and you said yes, and then it didn't happen. And that's when things turned sour. So what was the difference working on the war report to working on the reunion? I was fucking I was I was nigga rich. I was I was rich, but I was nigger rich. You know what I'm saying? Like at at 23 years old, nigger rich is dope. You know what I'm saying? That's that's not fucking happens to every 23 year old. Like I was I wasn't Mike Tyson rich, but I was I was fucking rich at 23. You know what I'm saying? Living on the fucking world, like at 23. You know what I'm saying? So the difference in recording was. That and the fact that this was now going to be my baby because I'm going to be there for every minute, every moment of the way on this album and I'm a motherfucker go in. And I just wanted to make sure on a reunion album that I was well heard, well understood, well articulated and it was about me. And Nori understood that. He let it be about me. So how was it working with Nori when you got out of prison? Like, how did things pick back up? Definitely, definitely a different Nori. You know what I'm saying? Definitely a different Nori. More smarter, more wiser. You know what I'm saying? Because he had that time to, to season out. You know what I'm saying? While I was sitting up, and then he he took more of a, I let you handle this. I'm going to handle this. I'll let, you know what I'm saying? More of a. I got this role, you know what I'm saying? Let me show you how to do this, or let me show you how to do that, you know what I'm saying? And just just rock with me, I'm gonna make sure we win. And also being my partner as to to making sure that we drop the bang in the shit that we gotta drop. Because at that time, he might have, you know, been not saying, not done, but I mean like, he was successful. I, I, I wasn't successful yet. I was known, you know what I'm saying? And that was the plan to make us successful. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I liked working that album because I didn't have to wonder, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have to wonder who we're gonna go to for some guidance or who we're gonna, you know what I'm saying? Or what, because we did that shit together. Nori was two albums in at that point. Yeah, it was two albums in, you know what I'm saying? Three, actually, four. War Report, N-O-R-E, Melvin Flint, and The Reunion. Because Melvin Flint came out before The Reunion, so he was four in. I was one. Not even a whole one. So you know what I'm saying? So that was definitely a head start. It's like giving the nigga four laps before you take off. You know what I mean? So that was definitely, I, I definitely learned to listen and watch and observe and, be, and become my own boss and do things that I know that help us win as well. So it worked out for us.